we officially got our new load. We just picked up at the uh, Smuckers plant here in Bloomsburg, PA. Deadheaded 300 and something miles to get over here in Pennsylvania. Um, it said that this used to be Del Monte Foods or something like that. I guess Smuckers took over and bought them. It's dog food. It stinks too. Stinks to high heaven. It's 0.2 miles turn right on. So when I showed up here, the guy took all my information down and then he was like, oh, we can't load you tonight. Okay, well, I need to square that away with J.B. Hunt because they're telling me that I could pick up from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. He's like, yeah, well, you, you really got to be here by, I don't know, I'd say 3 o'clock. Even then, it's pretty close to pushing it. I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> uh, which reminds me, hold on. Alright, I marked down that we're loaded. I had to do that before I started pulling out. Um, but anyway, the guy wasn't going to load me up, but then the manager came in and I don't know what made him say load him, but he told me he was going to be a while, whatever, <laughs> it beats 7 o'clock in the morning, so that's where we were on, we were on the verge of, uh, oh, you can stay over here in our lot, and we open up at 7 a.m., and I was like, so you guys can load me at 7 a.m., and that's when the manager was like, we'll just load them tonight, fine by me, I don't have to deliver this load until 7 o'clock tomorrow night, which is Sunday night, so it's really not not a big deal to me. GPS, there we go. Gotta do a little bit of roundabout to get back to 80 West. There was a, I went to go pick up the camera, but he was already done by the time I did. Um, there was a, guys for Hubbard, Ohio, or Hubbard, Ohio, <laughs> Hub Group, hooking up to a trailer there, um, a container, and he, he slams, I mean, he slams into it, and then the, the trailer is higher than the fifth wheel by probably about an inch. My point is there's that much extra pressure on the ground. The trailer, he ends up just dragging the trailer out on the pavement. I think, <laughs> I've done it uh, on, on gravel where, you know, the yard jockeys put the trailers way too close to one another and I couldn't get in for the landing gear. Um, but that's when the when there's no yard jockey around and I can't grab somebody to pull it out. Uh, if there's a yard jockey around, I'll make him pull it out. And if he won't pull it out, then I'll go talk to his bosses. Um, I don't have a problem with when they put the trailers so close together because they're trying to conserve room. That's not an issue. But I, I never really have a problem with them pulling the trailer out instead of beating the equipment up. It wasn't just the pads on the on the trailer, on the landing gear. I mean, he was sitting there spinning his tires, pulling pulling the thing out because there was just too much ground pressure. And I was just like, man, if I seen you treat my equipment like that, I, I'm yanking you out of that truck. That's, that's not cool. It wasn't even like like where it was like just barely dragging. I mean, it was just freaking. There was way too much pressure on the ground, and it was an empty trailer. You could hear the hollow. All he had to do was get under there. I know it's uncomfortable, but you can climb underneath the trailer and 
and get a few turns out of it uncomfortably to where you get the landing gear off the ground an inch or two and then pull forward and continue rolling up. That was just pure laziness. Ran over. Um, that's what you want to call it. So we have dog food. It's a pretty heavy load. It's um, forty. 41,000. See, they're given two different weights here, and I don't know. Um, one must be the pallets, I guess. The net weight, yeah, so it's, it's with the pallets. It's 41,967 pounds. They had a scale there, and I think it used to have an actual readout by the scale and I tried jumping on I jumped on the scale but I couldn't I couldn't see any readout so um, I did slide the tandems and just driving around the parking lot for a minute I can tell them good I can feel I can feel the weight balance I don't have any, any I'm not too heavy on the trailer it's not mounted too heavy back there lifting my drives up and I'm not too heavy on the drives because it's not lifting my my nose up Every every little bump and everything is just just nice and smooth. It's not doing anything like this. So, so that's it. Um, that spreadsheet that I mentioned in the last video, uh, I could have had that video up yesterday. Well, I have the video up. I just don't I haven't released it yet. Um, I'm hoping to have it done by tomorrow. Um, you guys aren't going to see this until probably Monday anyway. Uh, so that, I mean, that video is definitely going to be up first. But I, I plan on having it up a lot sooner. My thing is, is I'm trying to calculate fuel surcharge into it. So now I'm going into a whole new spiel of 52 weeks um, so that it can be broken down to the average. I mean, people can, that are using it, can, they can just punch in the, the, I'm doing it, or I did it, as far as you guys are concerned, uh, I did it to my week average, not the average of the country, um, which even with my average, on how it's broken out, I'm taking it's it's basically the fuel surcharge is uh, some companies use a dollar twenty, some companies use a dollar fifteen, some companies use a dollar twenty five. I'm using a dollar, so my coverage is a dollar, and even at that dollar, so you take the the current price minus subtract the the rate that you're you're giving, um, basically that you'll cover without fuel surcharge. Uh, so I put a dollar. And at that dollar, meaning the customer has to cover more fuel surcharge, which the customer isn't covering crap on it as far as this is concerned, just for the simple fact that uh, what 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 my fuel surcharge is, is just what I'm subtracting out of the gross revenue. It's very rare that the customer um, breaks it down. But in this case, I'm coming up with 23 cents or something like that, and Coyote paid me 25 cents a mile for the fuel surcharge. They actually broke it up. They're the only ones that have broken it up so far. But it, it was 25 cents a mile for fuel surcharge. And I'm coming up with like 22, 23 cents. Um, but that's that's where I'm at right now. So I just got started doing it. But I got to break it down Monday through Sunday, Monday through Sunday, Monday through Sunday. It calculates up the fuel, calculates up the gallons, and then it divides one another 
get the price per gallon average, and then um, and then uh, it times is it, by it doing that, it gives it the twenty something cents per mile times the, that by the miles gives you the fuel surcharge rate. surcharge rate on all miles actually we might have to change that to loaded miles that's all it's supposed to be there for I don't know I have to make some adjustments so we'll see you guys tomorrow morning we're going to uh, showed that other path there that's 70 down at the bottom of the hill that's the way I normally go through wheeling this is 470 going up and around wheeling I haven't been on this route in over 10 years just because of this mountain right here I'm almost betting West Virginia put this route in here just for trucks to go around wheeling just because they're going to earn the extra income off of IFTA so we're going to burn so much fuel climbing this damn mountain. Fast forward here for a second and see what it's like when we get to the top.
no, that mountain sucks. I gotta come up with a different plan. up this mountain in Ohio we just crossed into. or not to. That is the 
pushed. I think, uh, I honestly think that I'd rather stick to 70. Yeah, you gotta slow down to 45 miles an hour to get over the bridge and go through the tunnel and stuff like that, but. I think I lost more time climbing that mountain, climbing both those mountains, uh, than I did by slowing down through the, through the city there. So, uh, it was a nice, nice reminder of what, what it was going over that pass. I remember it being an extremely steep hill, mountain, whatever. Um, that's all I really remember about it. Like I said, ten, at least 10 years, if not more. The last time I can actually remember going over that was with Swift. That's, a, that's more than 10 years. That's 13. 12 to 13, 11 and a half to 13 years ago. So that's that's my year and a half that I spent with them. Um, actually, we're only six months away to 14 years. So somewhere in that area, that's, that's how long it's been since I climbed that mountain. I've been taking 70, I'm not on 70 very often, so. I, that's, that's, I'm not on 70 very often, and every time I am on 70, I go straight through wheeling. So, uh, as of right now, we're 62 miles from delivery. I'm not really sure how it's gonna go. Uh, I'm more than positive it's gonna be a lumper. And I guess there's some phone number I have to call if there's a lumber for the load. Uh, but the, there, there's nothing stated on the app or anything like that about there being a lumber. So I don't know if I need to, I don't know. I, I found that on, the, on a web search. So we'll see what happens. If they didn't update their stuff, that's on them. Um, I don't have any money except don't pay any cash, you won't be reimbursed. So the only thing I have in this truck is uh, EFS checks. I got a stack of them. Uh, but the one thing I gotta try to get my hands on is for is some uh, the other checks there. Com data. I gotta get some com data checks. Uh, I think Uber requires uh, deals with Com Data, so um, I gotta try to get my hands on Com Data checks. I've been just basically fingers crossed that if I end up needing a Com Data check, whoever's requesting payment has extra Com Data checks. I'll even uh, finag not finagle. I'll. Uh, barter with them. I'll give them some EFS checks for some comm data checks. So we'll see what happens. I'll let you know how it works out when we get to the delivery.